Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my study. We're in John 9 this week, as you'll have noticed, and a really important story of Jesus healing a man born blind. And we've got the healing, really, in our passage this morning, verses 4 through to 11. Do hit pause, do have a read of that. And I want to ask you, what are the questions that come out of this passage? What are the questions they're asking? And what are the questions we're left asking for ourselves today? Hit pause, come back to me in a minute. Well, what are the questions people are asking in Jesus' day? Uh, could this be a man who's been healed? Here's a man who's never been able to see. His eyes have never worked. Uh, so far as we know, from the womb, his optic nerves, no function at all. How could this man be healed? And healed like that. They know he's he was born blind. They're confused. Could this be a real healing? That's the question at the time. And the man says, yes, absolutely, it really is. I'm the evidence that Jesus heals. This is in the context of Jesus saying, as long as it's day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Jesus is doing God's work, bringing into the light who he is and what he's come to do, giving sight and uh, both spiritually and physically, this restoration that, that, that pertains to the kingdom. Uh, so there, there's, a, there's a, a window, if you like, here into the heavenly reality of God's kingdom where there won't be physical disability, where uh, sight will be restored, absolutely. The question for them is, is this a real healing? The answer is yes. The question for us, I think, is quite similar, isn't it? Does God still heal today? Is this something that was unique to Jesus? Well, no, clearly not, because the Acts of the Apostles show us uh, the Apostles doing similar things. And yet, it's clear that Jesus doesn't perform these sort of healing miracles persistently uh, or all the time or even most of the time, at least not in sort of miraculous uh, ways. The man who was healed of his blindness still died. Lazarus died twice. What a privilege that is. We need to be careful to remember that Jesus doesn't heal even the people he's around every time they get sick. We need, therefore, to have a, a, a proper sensible perspective here. There are those who will teach that God heals. If you have enough faith, God will heal you every time. To which I think the biblical answer is no. He didn't do it even in his own day. Even when Jesus was walking around Palestine, he didn't do that. So we need to be careful not to assume that God will heal, because then if he doesn't heal, we, we, we have to conclude that the person isn't really a Christian. And, and it seems perfectly clear to me in the scriptures, and I hope it is to you, that is not the size of our faith, but the size of our God who saves us. So we're shifting the focus there from, from God's power and willingness to bless his people. Um, through the prism of an assumption that God wants us to be happy, healthy and, uh, and well all the time, and therefore concluding the person isn't a Christian. We mustn't do that. If you have faith like a mustard seed, you can move mountains. So hang on, there needs to be a clear understanding that that's not what's going on. Rather, I think, we need to see that God, God sometimes has a different agenda, doesn't he? He doesn't always heal because he, he wants something better for us. We'll see that when we get to chapter 11 with Lazarus. Yes, God can heal today. He's still the same miraculous uh, God. He's still the, the supernatural God who can do whatever he chooses. And maybe we know some stories, perhaps we've had it ourselves, uh, cases where the doctors have given up and God has intervened and given life. We saw that on Sunday, didn't we, with uh, God healing Hezekiah. He can do that. He sometimes does do that. But equally, he doesn't always do that. Sometimes he heals in answer to our prayers through ordinary means, through the, the gifting of doctors, through medicines and so on. And that sh we shouldn't think of that as any less miraculous, just because it seems so ordinary to us. These are things that uh, 100 years ago would have seemed extraordinary uh, and miraculous then. Because they've become ordinary, we've become immune to the idea that God is working through people to do wonderful things. 
But we, we need to be careful, don't we? We need to recognise that God can heal and often does. He doesn't always. And that his purposes remain good. And that actually, rather than doubting the faith of the person who's suffering, we need to look to the God who may be doing something much more extraordinary through a period of suffering, as we were learning on Sunday. Um, this man, who Jesus healed, uh, was blind for years, many years. He's an adult, so 20 years, 30 years of blindness. And for all of that time, people would have been saying, uh, he's an outcast. God has rejected him. No, God has a purpose for him. That is something they, that they could never have conceived of. We need to be careful in the moment not to boil down God's goodness to whether or not he will heal. He may be doing something far, far bigger than we can see uh, through a particular moment of illness. I'll leave it there. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are able and you are willing to heal uh, often. Thank you that you use the, the gifting of doctors and, and sometimes when they can do nothing, you show us your, your extraordinary power. But Father, please help us not to doubt you when, when you don't heal. Help us to see that you have uh, purposes that are bigger than our uh, healing here and now. And please help us to trust you, that you remain good and you are doing the best things for us. For Jesus' sake. Amen.